Welcome dear students. My name is Dr. Milton. I am working in Madras Christian College, Department of Public Administration as Assistant Professor. Today we are going to discuss under local government, township, port and cantonment. First, we would like to discuss about township. What is township? See, township it is also an another form of urban government. How we have other types of urban local governments are there. Likewise, township is also one among them. Basically, this township is created for the, the employees, those who are working in the larger public sector enterprises. This kind of townships will be located very close by to the their organization, which means very close by to their enterprises. So, this township which will have all sort of facilities, whatever facilities you see in the urban local government, for example, municipal corporations, you will be able to see all the facilities which is there in the, you know, I mean town, which will be available even in the township as well. As I mentioned earlier, this township is predominantly, which is created for the dwelling place for the employees, those who are working for the particular public sector enterprises. If you see in Tamil Nadu, there is a place called Neiveli, which is in the Kadalur district. This Neiveli, it is famous for Neiveli Lignite Corporation. If you go there, you will be able to see such a big and beautiful, well-planned township. This township, it has all the facilities within itself. Since this township, which has been created especially for the employees of the particular public enterprises. So, they get their fund from the particular public sector enterprises only. See, that is why the in this township area, there is only a nominated member who will be looking after all the activities of this township. He is called a city manager or a town administrator. Here, the city manager or the town administrator role is to take care of the complete administration of the township. So, for him, the engineer, the township engineer and other officials will be assisting the town administrator, which means town manager to help in order to provide all the facilities for the particular township. Why the reason is, why there is no elected member for this township means, why there is only nominated members means. As I mentioned earlier, this township which is being created for the employees of the, the so and so organization, public sector enterprises. Hence, the financial support, 100 percent financial support they will receive from that particular public sector enterprises. That is why there is no opportunity for to elect the members on their own. They will, they will be having a nominated members. See, this public sector enterprises, which will be the extensions of the bureaucratic structure of this township. They will take care of the complete administrative activities of the township. What are the significance of these townships? See, whenever they are planning to have a townships, there should be some benefit for the society. There should be some scope out of which the first and foremost is this township which encourages developmental activities not only in that particular township, also the nearby cities, nearby towns, the adjacent villages, also the neighboring areas will be able to benefit from this township. Whatever developmental activities they are taking here, definitely which will create impact in the neighboring areas as well. This is first and foremost significance of the township. Second one is about this township will be able to provide such a quality service to their residents, which means the employees who will be the residents over there. The employees only will be the residents over there because they get fund from the public sector enterprises. So, by having this fund, they will be able to provide such a decent quality services to their residents. Next one is about they collect very meager, very minimal amount as a tax. For an example, water tax or electricity bill tax. 
this taxes again will be used for the development activities in this particular township probably if they are planning to have some park or some place for no i mean refreshment this money will be used in order to have a such a better quality life also next one is other important uh, significance in terms of employment opportunity which provides huge amount of employment opportunities for the people which means people can come from various parts of the nation so that they can come they can work for the public sector enterprises so that they can avail whatever facilities which is available which is you know very much available in the townships what are the constitution provisions for this township see according to our indian constitution part 9a was inserted in the constitution by the recommendation of 74th amendment act of 1992 and which article 243q which clearly states that each and every state should have a constitution of a municipality if you see one step according to article 243q1 which gives authority to notify these kind of areas by the state government which enacts legislation to subsume these powers see this township is also under the control of our the constitution whatever important facilities the municipality or municipal corporation other local bodies are supposed to provide to their so called citizens according to the constitution 12th scheduled there are 18 important specific functions which supposed to be done by the the local body which is also applicable for townships see next we'll discuss about what are the characteristics features of the townships first one is about this predominantly are dedicatedly which is created for the employees those who are working for the public sector enterprises because of that these townships are entirely well planned townships in terms of infrastructure it is well planned township which will have a well planned infrastructure apart from that whatever services they are giving to their employees those who are living in this township they provide such a better quality services when you compare to other services from municipal corporation at the same time if you are trying to compare the services from the townships definitely the services which is provided in the townships are far far better than the the you know, i mean services which is been provided by other local bodies because they get their fund from the industry they allocate budget for the developmental activities in the townships also which provides huge amount of employment opportunities for the citizens when large number of people they are living means there will be uncontrolled and upward growth of slums and substandard housing in the periphery of the township this will be there definitely apart from that so there are chances for township gives a flip to rapid unsystematic development of the adjoining areas some we cannot expect see township as i mentioned there is a township administrator for the township apart from that you no know, he'll be having a subordinates like you know i mean town planning engineer and other administrative staff will be available to assist the town administrator but the nearby areas without there is no any restriction when any townships it is grown the neighboring areas also will grow along with this township but they will not get any benefit from the township so this this will be there always this will be there okay now we'll discuss about what are the few limitations in the township there will be upward development when the upward development takes place there is urban management issues yes definitely it will be there second one is about there is no elected member in the township only you know i mean the nominated member because of this this undemocratic body which will make up of private entities begins parallel governance where the problem arises see whenever you see democracy which gives opportunity for the people to talk to raise questions to the management to the local body the office bearers in the local body but here it is not possible next one is about see once the powers have grown 
so which will include taxation authority so they are the one who will decide the taxes how much of amount has to be collected from the people but it will be very less only meager amount only okay apart from that yes all of sudden if some 10000 families are relocating from various parts of the family they are living in one particular area definitely which will have other impacts on the environmental aspect so water bodies will be severely polluted at the same time there are chances high level of chances for ground water level may go down there are chances for deforestation how they will expand that it how they will construct the township how they will create the township without uh, having a deforestation so which will lead to deforestation as well then because of that the tribal pollutants also will be suffered this is all about township now we'll move on to next topic called ports yes we all know what is port right here ports it is you know i mean such a transportation facility for our nation see our country india has somewhere about you know i mean coastline of 6000 kilometers we have 12 major ports 200 intermediate or you can consider as a minor ports in order to manage all those things portress which is according to the act of the parliament what is the main objective why do we need to have a port why do we need to have a port trust here the main objectives are only two first one is about the reason being establishment of port trust is to manage and protect the port to manage and the same times port has to be protected apart from that they have to provide the basic amenities for the dwellers how townships are providing all the basic facilities according to the constitution there are 18 important function they are supposed to you know i mean meet for the people those who are dwelling in that township likewise here they are liable to provide basic civic amenities to their people this port the official of the port is appointed by the central government whereas township there is only nominated members but here in port trust there will be a nominated as well as elected members but the one who is appointed by the central government member for the port will be the chairman this chairman which is a official see one hand municipalities on the other hand ports the civic functions of municipalities as well as ports both are same because end of the day their objective is to provide basic facilities basic amenities civic amenities to the so called citizens in india as i mentioned earlier there are 12 major ports for an example kolkata chennai mumbai and tutukurin mahabagova these are all few examples for the major ports this port is which provides such a transportation facility for our nation majority of you know i mean transportation happens through sea ways only water ways only see as i mentioned earlier the major role of port is for transporting things goods see this ports interface between sea ports and inland transport this ports takes care of transport not only in the sea also the inland transports as i mentioned earlier the major ports are managed by the central government and these minor ports for an example i have just listed few uh, minor ports here so these minor ports are managed by the state government as i mentioned in the you know, i mean my previous slide we have such a vast coastline about 6000 kilometers in india in the eastern part of india kolkata west bengal pradeep in orissa visakhapatnam and now andhra pradesh chennai and tutukuri in tamil nadu if you see western part of india cochin in kerala new mangalore in karnataka manmagova port jnpt which is there in goa then mumbai in maharashtra then kandla in gujarat these are all few you know i mean the coastlines for india east as well as west coast for the india see the oldest indian ports like kolkata mumbai chennai 
which came way back in 17th century itself. Don't think that ports which is just created, just you know, I mean, one century before it was created for the transport version. No, it was created way back in 17th century itself. Later on, other major ports which was created like Vaisak in the year of 1933, Cochin in the year of 1936, Kandla which was commissioned in 1959. After the accession of Goa, the Manma Goa port became another major port in the year of 1963. But we have a, such a rich history for the you know, I mean, port in India way back in 17th century itself. These 12 major ports are owned and managed by the central government, likewise for minor ports are owned and managed by state governments. This ports is not only for domestic transportation in terms of goods and services, also this ports acts as a catalyst for India's foreign trade as well. See, majority of the export happens through seaways only. That's why our government is taking lot of measures to strengthen the ports which will provide such a revenue for our nation which will be very much useful for increase the GDP of our nation. Now we'll discuss about few policy initiatives for the development of ports. First one is about see the policies basically made for few things few important things. First one is about to improve the efficiency and customer satisfaction in the port areas. Whatever, I mean, amount of effort we are using, this will be used for to increase the efficiency and customer satisfaction. Second is for the revenue generation. As I mentioned earlier, port is the major source of revenue in terms of transport. So that, you know, I mean, we can make huge revenue for our nation, then which will create new enterprise culture. Apart from that, government also has taken some important measures. In the year of 1996, private sector partnership for the port. In the year of 1997, next year, major ports to set up joint ventures with foreign ports issued for further guidelines. In the year of 1997, it was proposed. Because of that, other important thing is corporatization of ports. Why ports has to be as to function like corporates. See, the ports, they are not able to operate in a market oriented economy. So, that is why the move towards corporatization of major ports which is in the progress through which you will be able to make the ports to function more efficiently, more, no, I mean, can, we can make ports to be more efficient so that which will create customer satisfaction through which we will be able to make money. Also, joint ventures, see the government is decided to permit setting up 100 percent foreign owned subsidiary for the ports, but while sharing the revenue, the ratio is like 49 is to 51 percentage, which will also helpful for the ports to come up with new ideas to get into a new era so that they will be able to perform efficiently. Also, other important service which has been uh, created in there of 1976 that is called Dredging Corporation of India which is created. This The main aim is to provide dredging services to the major and minor ports. So, that which will help full far to clean up the ports, which will help the port it is, you know, I mean, uh, so that they can function more efficiently. So, that, you know, I mean, they will be having a high standard in terms of the quality of the service. Here, there are few problems which is faced by our Indian ports. First one is about there is a long waiting time for the ships to get the berth. There is a delay in a, uh, handling the cargoes and a low productivity resulting in delayed dispatch to the ships and you know, I mean congestion due to slow movements of cargo. They have to have a you know, I mean the recent technological advancement, new equipment they are supposed to purchase so that this will be there. Then slow computerization of program which will also uh, hamper efficiency of the ports, then inadequate road, rail transport, infrastructure also which is there at the port. But whatever problems, which is that definitely these problems can be rectified. Yes, demerits always will be there, whatever process. But if you have a proper plan, we will be able to overcome from all those things. Containment. What is containment? See, basically it is a French word. 
this cantonment the french it is derived from a french word called canton which means corner or one district which means it refers the corner or one district the canton which refers temporary military or winter encampment so the people those are working in defense they go for a vacation they will have a camp over there so this place earlier it is called cantonment see this cantonment board which is established for municipal administration in the defense area which means the cantonment area for civilian population those who are living in the cantonment area previously cantonment means which is known only for the military people defense people but later on civilian also can live in the cantonment area hence the municipal administration also required over there in order to provide facilities for the civilian those are living in this cantonment area have been created under the central act of 1924 which was enacted legislation enacted by the central government because of which we have 63 cantonments board in india as of now in our country we have 63 cantonment boards till date see as i mentioned cantonment board it is the place which is not only for the defense people also civilian can live over there see it is a civic administration body which is under the ministry of defense this cantonment area which is comprises of both military as well as civilian populations but the ministry of defense and you know, which has the administrative jurisdiction over the cantonment boards this cantonment board it is purely purely created by the central government the executive officer of the cantonment the head how the town administrator appointed by the you know township by the public sector enterprises likewise the executive officer for the cantonment is board is also appointed by the president but this cantonment board is like port they'll be having elected as well as nominated both the members will be there but whereas township it is not there but port and cantonment board there will be elected as well as nominated members are there their term the tenure of this you know i mean members are 3 years the military officer commanding the cantonment station is called ex officio member chairman of the board there are three four types of cantonment boards this types or categories of the cantonment board is made based on the population see if first we'll discuss about what is category 1 cantonment if any cantonment has the population of more than 50000 which comes under this category category 1 category 2 is more than 10000 but less than 50000 because all if it goes beyond 50000 category 1 is there category 2 means from 10000 to 50000 likewise for category 3 means minimum is 2500 maximum is 10000 from 2500 to 10000 means it is category 3 category 4 obviously the cantonment which has less than 2500 population these are all four categories of the cantonment as of now kanpur cantonment is considered as the largest cantonment in india both by area and population see as i mentioned there are 63 cantonments boards there in india out of which the kanpur is considered as the largest cantonment in india cantonment boards there are both elected and so less nominated members are there their job is to ensure to provide all the civic amenities to the people those who are living in this cantonment area see one part of the cantonment area it is reserved for the people of defense other at the same time the common public also can live over there this is about cantonment in this today's session we discussed about township port and finally we discussed 
the cantonment with that i'll conclude my session thank you so much